Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalVintage.com. I've been getting a lot of questions about sheet metal recently. And uh, one of the questions is how to control sheet metal. I also have a viewer question from Mustafa Muhammad who wants to know about drawing a particular shape. And I'm going to see if we can kind of address drawing the shape that he's looking for and to control different aspects of that shape. So right now I'm in the model workspace. And if I want to do things related to sheet metal, I'm probably going to go and hit the drop down and switch into sheet metal. Not a lot of changes to the toolbar. Um, we still see some of our sketch palettes, but we're going to see the little sheet metal flange command and a different modification uh, command that we're going to work with. So what controls our sheet metal parts, if we hit this modify, is we're going to see something called sheet metal rules. And by default, you're given six rules, three millimeter and three inch rules. And this is sort of the basis of any rules that you want to create from here on out. So I'm going to close this out. And we're going to talk about making a, a flange. And there's sort of three ways to make flanges. We can do a contour flange. We can sketch a face that's going to turn into a face flange. Or we can create edge flanges as well. So I'm going to use a center point rectangle and sketch on the top plane. Anchor to the origin. And we'll just make a little 5 by 5 inch uh, square. And I'm going to stop that sketch. Go back to my home rule. And what I'd like to do now is make a flange out of that. So if I start the flange command, uh, Fusion wants to know what do I want to make a flange out of. I'm going to select the profile. And it pops up the different rules that I have available to me. Right now I only have six of those. We'll work on creating a new one in a minute. So let's hop down. And let's start with the steel inch uh, template. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And now the thickness of the part is derived from that rule that tells the sheet metal part how thick to be. So we're going to go and we're going to add a couple flanges onto this part. So let's click on this edge and this edge and we'll pull up on that part and we'll go ahead and choose OK. So I'm going to make it I guess an inch tall should be good enough and I'll hit OK and you notice when I made those flanges together at the same time it added a corner treatment here. Um, that's kind of a round corner and we're going to look in the rules and see how that corner treatment was added. So we'll also notice if we move around that there's other aspects of this such as a bend radius that's applied here. Um, and we didn't certainly didn't tell Fusion what bend radius we wanted but that is also controlled in the sheet metal rule and we'll take a look at the sheet metal rules and see how we can control that. So I want to go and modify my sheet metal rules and instead of editing the one that I have, I'm going to go to the library and I'm going to find the steel inch, which is the one that we just created from. And I'm, right, I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to say I'd like to create a new rule. The new rule is going to be derived from the rule that I selected when I created it. So you see how it calls it steel inch one. So let's call this steel inch, but I'm going to modify the name with the word YouTube. Now typically the way, typically the way that people name their sheet metal rules is the material and um, the gauge of material that they're working with. So this is kind of a silly name, but it'll get the point across. You can see my sheet metal part is 0.1 inches thick. It's using a K factor of 0.44. We'll probably do another video on K factor just to discuss what that is. And then the, the gap right here is set, the miter, rip, and seam gap is set to be thickness. So that would be equal to 0.1 inches. So let's go take a look at a couple of the other things. We have bend conditions. Uh, you can see the bend radius is also set the thickness, so that should be 0.1. And we'll look at a couple things like right now we see the relief shape of round, um, a relief width of thickness, relief depth, minimum remnant that's going to be left over. And we'll also see some things like corner conditions. We have a two bend intersection. Uh, we'll come take a look at the three bend in a bit, but let's see if we can change some things about this two bend intersection. So right now my release shape is round, but if I hit the drop down, maybe I'm going to choose linear weld. And so we'll see in the corner we have this kind of round right now. As I hit the save button and close this, I'm going to go and switch my rule. So I've got steel inch, I need to switch it to my new rule, and when I hit OK, you'll see that my now uh, gap changed to be a linear weld gap and we can make uh, changes to make this gap tighter so it'd be easier to fill with weld and all those things and be controlled with the sheet metal rule. Um, we can also take a, a look here. Let's go ahead and use the measure command and let's inspect the radius of this. And here we'll see that the inside bend radius is 0.1 which is exactly what we'd expect it to be. So we can go, let's go take a look at another thing that we can change on the sheet metal part. 
I'm going to add another flange to this, but instead of adding the flange the entire width here, like this is the default, I'm going to choose the symmetric flange option, and I'm just going to offset this some amount. And when I hit OK, what you'll notice is that Fusion automatically adds some kind of a little tear here, a little cut, and it added a rounded cut over. Let's see if we can maybe change that feature a little bit. So from the Modify menu, I'm going to go back to my sheet metal rules, and now what I want to do is I want to edit the sheet metal rule by clicking on the pencil. So I'm looking for the steel inch YouTube rule. Um, we'll go through here. Let's make the uh, let's make the bend radius instead of thickness. Let's make that 0.15. So we'll make that a little bit bigger bend. And the relief shape for this is currently round. Let's make that be straight. And let's change the relief thickness to be point. 05. We'll do 50 thousandths of an inch. So when I save that and I hit close, you'll see that we change the aspects of that particular cut. We change the width, we change the shape from a round shape to a square shape. So that's how we can control some of those kind of things. Um, so there is a couple of the things that are commonly changed from within sheet metal rules. There is another bend condition called a three bend intersection. So I'm going to draw a line for this one. I'll need to switch to the sheet metal part in a minute. But let's just draw a line like that to start out with. And I'll draw another line out. We'll make these two lines equal and we'll dimension them. We'll make them 10 inches. So we'll go ahead there and we'll stop the sketch. And I'm in the model environment, but what I really meant to be in is the sheet metal, so we'll go ahead and switch to that. Now I'm going to choose a flange. I'm going to click on those two edges for the flange that I want to make, and as I pull up, what we'll notice is um, Fusion is adding the bend radiuses and things that I want. Now what I really wanted it was to go on the inside, so we're going to switch it to side two. And then it wants to know what, what rule do I want to start with. So I'm going to choose the steel inch YouTube rule. I'm going to click OK. Um, I'm going to do a quick measure, and when I click on that inside radius, um, so I must not have saved the inside radius because it's not the right size. Um, but there's uh, a couple of bends. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose this flange and this flange. And I'm going to pull them together. And when I do, I get a three bend intersection. So we'll take a look at how the three bend intersection works by going to the modify. And we'll choose sheet metal rules. And I'm going to edit this rule. And we're going to go to the corner conditions and change the three corner condition. So right now it's set to be round with radius. Let's change it to be intersection and see the difference that we'll see on screen. So I'm gonna hit save and close and not really much updated. However, let's, let's see where this did update. So I'm gonna say modify and I wanna create a flat pattern. I'm gonna choose a face that I wanna be my stationary face and I'll hit okay. And we'll take a look at this bend. So here you can see the shape of the bend, how it meets in the intersection. I'll exit the flat and let's go modify that sheet metal rule again. So sheet metal, sheet metal rules, find that rule and click on edit. And we're gonna to go to corner conditions and change the three bend intersection type. Let's change it back to um, full round and we'll hit save and close. Now if we look, nothing really changed in our model again. But if I go and uh, activate that sheet metal pattern, you'll see now that the way that these three bends meet is a little bit different than what it was previously. If you go back a few seconds and look at my other example, you can see how this has changed. So the key to whatever you want to do with sheet metal is going to be in creating the rules. The rules control all the aspects of a sheet metal part. And since we had one more request, let's go see if we can take a, a look at that part for the viewer request. So I'm going to start up by sketching a rectangle on the, the face, and I'm just going to go ahead and um, make a Again, I'll start with like a five by five rectangle and we'll stop the sketch. So now that we have that, I'm gonna make a face out of it. So again, I wanna switch into sheet metal. I'm gonna choose my flange, click on that, and I'll use my YouTube rule again. So there we go. And now I'm gonna click on a flange and select my edges. So what Mustafa is looking for is sort of a pyramid shape. I'm gonna click on these four edges all at the same time. I can pull down my edges to whatever height that I want them to be, so we'll go like two and a half inches. But we don't really have the pyramid shape yet. So you'll see that there's this bend manipulator. As I grab on this and drag it out, I can change the angle of this part. And now I can make it more of a pyramid shape. So there's my pyramid shape. 
and once I have that, I can do more things uh, from that. Maybe I want to do another flange. I'll click on my four edges. And I should have looked at what angle I bent this at the last time. So we'll bend this out. And what I really want to do is I want to change the angle to like zero degrees or uh, minus, let's try minus 35, minus 35 degrees to make it go down. I didn't look at what his what, what the angle was that I created this, but now you can see that we are creating little flange shapes that are coming down. I'll click OK. And I can tell Fusion I'd like to make a flat pattern out of this. So I'm going to say create and create flat pattern. I'd like up end, so I'm going to click this as my stationary face and click OK. And there you can see that Fusion will generate the sheet metal part, um, sheet metal flat pat panel that uh, when I fold this up, the pattern, um, this is what I would get when I fold it up to get an accurate flat pattern out of this. So it, hopefully this was helpful. Um, remember that everything in sheet metal is controlled by the sheet metal rules. Don't modify the standard rules that come in Fusion. Use those as the basis for making your next rule. And then copy and change the different aspects of the rule to control the way that the bends work. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you found this video useful, it would be great if you'd like it. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, don't be afraid to ask them in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching.